I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we return to our Microsoft Access playlist, and we're gonna talk about import specifications. And specifically, we're going to look at an import specification for a CSV file, or in this case, TXT files that have uh, comma separated values uh, in rows inside of them. And we're gonna look at how to uh, create an import specification so that you don't have to go back every time that you import it to show you know which columns are supposed to be what and all that kind of stuff we just want it to be automatic and so uh, the first thing that we'll show is how to create the specification uh, then we're going to show how to just use the specification manually to skip all the process of, of you know selecting this column for this data type and all that stuff uh, we're just going to say use this specification and import the csv file or txt file in this case and, uh, and then we're gonna do some coding and we're gonna show how to automate, uh, you know, applying the import specification to our import process. And so without further ado, let's get to our import specifications in Microsoft Access. If you're interested in coaching or if you'd like to see more behind the scenes uh, type of stuff on, from the channel, uh, please check out my Patreon page. The link is in the, in the description. Okay, so I've got a bunch of text files that are in a folder. This is what the data looks like. Um, it's CSV data on the inside, comma separated values. Although these text files do have a TXT extension, it doesn't really make much of a difference, but uh, that's what we're gonna upload into our application. Now we've had a candy theme for quite a few episodes, and this is the same file that I've been using for much of that stuff. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go into my external data and we're going we're gonna to find a new data source. We're going to go from file and we're going to say text file. Um, and uh, this process is, is, is something that you have to do the first time, or at least it's sort of the easiest way of doing it, uh, is to do the import manually one time and create specification and then you can reuse it over and over again, the specification. So, so I'm just going to go in. I've got that candymakers.txt <clears throat> file, and I'm going to say import into my current database as the option there. And this is familiar. If you've uh, done some importing, you can see uh, there we go. There's our delimiters. It's comma-separated values. Um, and uh, there's looks like there's... Um, double quotes for the text, uh, text qualifier. And uh, so there we go. We're going to click off uh, first row contains the field names. And now we can see uh, that it's picked up the data pretty nicely. And there's our text qualifier. And uh, if we continue on, uh, we can see the next uh, screen, which is where we could sort of change the data type. Um, you know, like if you had a, you needed a text field for something that had numbers in it at the top, um, this screen would automatically detect it as numbers and then it would screw it up um, later on. So you'd have to change it to text manually here. And this is where you can set everything up and, uh, <clears throat> and sort of if you know about the data uh, that's further down in the file and you need to change things, then you can. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll say, um, add a primary key, um, that's a nice option. And then, uh, you know, you can name your, <clears throat> name your imported table. Um, however, what we can do is if we go into our advanced screen here, um, this is where we can sort of see a lot of the same data that we just looked at. And, you know, there's our field delimiter, our text qualifier, uh, you know, the date um, types and everything and also the data types down below. Um, there's our time delimiter and uh, our data types, and we can save that. So if I go save as, um, it's gonna say, well, what do you wanna save it as? And so this is where we can create our import export specification. And so this is very, very handy because it's gonna save all of those selections that you just did for that CSV file so you might have a file with like a hundred columns in it 
uh, with all different data types and you had to change some numbers to be saved as text and stuff like that. And this is where you can save it so that you don't have to go back and do it every time. So we'll call it, I'm going to call it the CM import spec, uh, import spec. And uh, if I wanted to see, you know, where did that get saved, then I can see right there, there's an import spec. Um, so you might end up with a lot of import specs if you've got a whole bunch of different types of imports uh, and things like that. So we've saved it, we'll go OK. And we can continue on here and I can import this just using the the options that you know I selected and you can see there it goes uh, finished importing it there weren't there were not any errors and you can see now there's a candy makers table that I can look at in the navigation on the left there so there we go I open the table it's got uh, the candy company the work type the you know the the makers ID and the number of hours that were spent on that project and things like that. And so that's all fine and dandy, uh, but that was a manual import. So what if I delete that and I want to go back and import a file that's you know the same or similar, I'll just import the same one for this example, but we'll do some different ones in a minute. Um, and so it's the same thing. I can go back to my folder and find the file again and uh, and I can import it. And if I uh, this is where I can go OK um, and say this was a really big file with, you know, dozens of fields. Well, it's going to be really nice if I can just go advanced and just go specs, choose my spec and say open. And then it's going to pull in all that saved, you know, configuration that I did. And then I can just hit finish. And um, and then that saved me a whole bunch of time even on the manual import of that uh, of that uh, text file. And so there you go. There's our, our, our candy import once again. And, uh, and it saved it just the way that we wanted to. And uh, so what we might want to do after that is, you know, well, what if I want to automate this? How do, how do I use that import spec when I'm automating an import into my, di into my database? And uh, it's quite simple to do. Um, I'll just create a simple um, module here. Um, and uh, we'll do a, a, a sub in there, uh, import CSV. And I won't put any arguments or anything on it. I'll just make this as simple as possible. Um, and put a comment up here, import uh, a CSV. And then we're going to use the uh, do command dot um, transfer text um, command which is extremely handy because um, as you can see there's a whole bunch of options we're going to say AC import delimited and uh, and then you can see on the next uh, argument there's the specification name so I can actually go and I can put that specification that I just created and I can uh, have all of those options for you know all the fields that are in there and the data types and qualifiers and everything it's all saved so I can just name that right here, and then I can, you know, say, well, where do I want, where do I want that to go, and as far as a table name goes, so I'll just say my candy makers for this example, and uh, and then that's, you know, um, that's pretty good uh, start. And uh, the next thing is the file name, uh, which we'll have to put in uh, sort of manually here. So we'll say C you know, uh, dev and then candymakers.txt. And that's going to set us up for um, being able to import that. We'll put, I don't think you have to say uh, to put the field names in there, um, but I'll put true anyway as an argument. These are optional arguments. As you can see, that's the square bracket around it. Um, but I'll put a true on that one and I'll save this module uh, as a uh, CSV import or something like that and uh, and then now we've got a module and we've got a very simple sub that's going to import our our uh, text file and so in order to run that I'll just hit the run button I'll put the cursor inside the function or inside the subroutine hit hit the uh, the play button and now you can see now I've got a new table there called my candy makers 
And uh, so it's used the specification that we created. Uh, and so now uh, with that sort of saved information, uh, we were able to put it into our automation so that uh, we can be sure that the data is the way that we want it to be when it comes in. And if we wanted to, uh, we could also apply it to many files. So you'll note in the previous uh, or in the, the screenshot I had, I had some other text files of different differing sizes and different data, but they have the same, they use the same import spec. And so you could do a simple procedure like this where, you know, you know, in file, uh, file integer from one to three, and, uh, and we'll just, you know, we'll use our, um, our transfer text in there. Uh, but first what we're going to do is we're going to create, uh, you know, we'll, our file name, which is going to have that number on it. So uh, you could be iterating through your, say, uh, your folder and you could be getting the name. In this case, I'm just getting the name by specifying a number uh, on the end of, of the file. And so what I'm doing here is I just concatenated the name together to throw the number on the end. Now I'll just copy and paste our do command transfer text uh, um, statement. And uh, so now, um, now it's going to import three times. It's going to go through that. It's going to use that import spec for each of those files. You could also go, you know, if fo this file type, then use this other spec, or use this, you know, this file type, then use this other spec. But um, in this case, we're going to use the same spec on each uh, on each file. And uh, I'll give it a, a a nicer name inside the database. I'll put an underscore, and then I'll I'll put the the file number uh, on the end of it for our integer, so that it'll say Candy Makers one, Candy Makers two, Candy Makers three in terms of table names. As you can see, that's what I've got up above there. We're doing a for next loop, and so it's going to go one, two, three, and it's going to run this each time. And it's going to use that spec, and then it's going to put that number on the end of the file. Um, and uh, that's really, really great. But we also need to look at the file that's coming in uh, because uh, we're not going to use that anymore. We're actually going to stick in that concatenated file name that we created up above there. And you could do the same thing for your import spec name. Um, if you, like I said, if you had know file is this has this in it or something then use this spec you could do that as well so now I hit I hit the play button and it's done three files because it's gone through one two three and if I take a look at uh, what I've got in my folder there I can see I've got one two three files and they're all different uh, in terms of the numbers and everything so so um, those are our three files and that is how you can use an import specification and automate it in Microsoft Access. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to do an import specification in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and uh, click the bell when you see the bell so you'll be notified of any new content that I put up. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.